The next one I want to talk about is the Cleveland Open Cup method. The Cleveland Open Cup method is actually designed so that we can look at the flash points and the fire points of a fluid. Now the idea is we're going to have a sample of your oil, we're going to heat it up to a temperature, we're going to have an open flame directly above for the vapor as it's coming off. When that flame causes a flash, that's the flash point. So we're going to be measuring the temperature of the oil so that we actually see when it flashes. So every, every oil has a flash point. Now the flash point is slightly different than the fire point. The fire point is as we heat up that liquid, that oil, we're going to reach a point temperature wise where it will catch on fire and stay on fire. That's the fire point. So every liquid has a flash point, every liquid has a fire point as far as the oil we're using. So you want to know them both, so you want to know when it's going to flash and when it's going to actually burn. And they are always different. Cylinder oils, and you may use cylinder oils, they are a different lubricating oil than a normal petroleum base. Uh, I would find out exactly what you're using and find out what the fire point and flash points are just so you're aware. But the grease have the same flash point? No, it will vary because the additive to the grease is based on what what additive we use. So whether it's a calcium salt or what kind of additive we put in the temperature. Okay? A normal petroleum base, once we get to 230, we start losing its ability to work and we have to worry about the flash and fire points. Greases, for whatever reason, they added it to the grease, the calcium or whatever it is that we have, changes that property of the oil. Even though the oil and the makeup of grease is 90% oil, it still changes that flash point and that fire point. So it's what it operates at normally and then if we can measure it. All oils will also have a pour point what we will do is we actually will freeze the oil in a container. We'll turn it on its side and we'll watch to see if there's no <coughs> surface movement of the oil for five seconds. If it moves, we put it back in and we make it colder. When we have five seconds of no surface movement, now we've determined the pour point of the liquid, of the lubricant. It all depends on how cold you're going to ask this thing to work in. Okay? Okay? Certain parts of this area get extremely cold. You guys had you guys had more below zero days than we had in Ohio this year. So your below zero days are where we have this issue. At what point does that oil get too cold to even move? So molecular movement. The cloud point is where and when do we see the liquid beginning to crystallize. Now, if you're familiar with the Kelvin scale, the Kelvin scale will go to a minus 459 Fahrenheit. At minus 459 Fahrenheit at Kelvin, we have no molecular movement at all. It is frozen solid. That's different than what I'm asking for here. I'm asking for what temperature can I actually start crystallizing a lubricant, an oil. An oil will 